welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm R.B. Kelly. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll review the most recent top five Think Tech talk shows and staff pick. We'll check out the elements of the best of the best and get a handle on the public issues and the guests involved. Think Tech produces more than 35 talk shows every week in our downtown high-tech green screen studio. Here's a list of all our incredible Think Tech shows and hosts. As you can see, they're very diverse, and their coverage is also very diverse, showing you things you might never have otherwise known. Every week, Think Tech chooses its top five Think Tech talk shows from the week before based on the number of views each of them has had on the internet. For this past week, the winning shows were as follows. Number one, from the series Young Talents Making Way on June 5th, 2018, hosted by Andrea Gabrielli. It's called Dementia, Beyond Memory Loss, with guests Ryan Wynn, a student, and Bebby Davis, a STEM resource teacher. It's on our Young Talents Making Way playlist. The most common type of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, which makes up 50 to 70 percent of cases. An estimated number of 25,000 people live with Alzheimer's disease in the state of Hawaii. The societal cost of dementia in Hawaii is high, especially for Ohana caregivers, and concern is on the rise. Ryan Wynn, a student at Honolulu's Kaiser High School, carried out a science project for the Hawaii State Science and Engineering Fair to answer critical questions related to this cognitive impairment disease and shared what he found with us. Cutting-edge research at Kaiser High School is furthering our understanding of dementia and memory loss so that treatments might be found and implemented. We also learned that recent activities in art museums have brought hope for Alzheimer's patients. So maybe, uh, Ryan, why don't we have your first slide up so you can, we can tell us, you can tell us more about uh, this dementia science project that you carried out. Sure. Yeah. So um, here, this is just an image of the brain. You can see a cross-section. And um, okay. you can actually see the hippocampus and the amygdala, two of the um, main regions that I looked at in this project. What are they? Well, the hippocampus, it has large effects on memory. Um, okay, so it's a memory, it's a memory um, storage, can we say, for the, for the brain? Uh, it creates new memories ah, and okay. transfers long, um, short-term memories into long-term memories. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's very important. It's also affected early on in Alzheimer's disease. And there's also the amygdala, which is another one of the places I looked at. Which is which the has, purple one we're looking at in this uh, image yeah. that with the, the, the arrow. Yeah. That's right, right next to the hippocampus. Right next to the hippocampus. And this area has effects on emotion, including emotional connections. Okay, so that's why you focus particularly on this. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So what's your science project about? Well, in this project, I used um, data sets from two different databases and using a certain program called FreeSurfer, I turned these um, data sets, which came from an MRI machine, into processed MRI images that were 3D based and uh, they were 3D vo and voxel based. And I used these to create these volumetric images that I could perform volumetric analysis on and look at how Alzheimer's disease would affect the brains of these different patients. So you were trying to see uh, a connection between the size of these amygdala and hippocampus uh, uh, with normal patients and uh, pe people affected with dementia, is that Yes, right? definitely. Yeah. And I also looked at two different areas of the brain um, besides the hippocampus and amygdala, which were the insula, which um, has multiple different effects, and the entorhinal cortex, which has similar effects to the um, hippocampus which is memory, but it's also the supposedly the first area in the brain affected by Alzheimer's disease. Right. Uh, Bibi, just a small wrap up about the importance of the, the, the science fair, our state international science fair. Yeah. The importance of the state science fair is that, you know, every kid is curious. Every kid wants to learn and know something. There are so many problems they can solve today. And, you know, with new technology, innovation, and creativity, you know, kids want to invent. And so this provides a platform for the kids to come and try. And so with enough support and the right support the community, and yeah. the community, and a lot of partnership, uh, we help move that kid and make it happen. So we make dreams possible. And for make one, dream possible. Yes, yeah. and help the world to be a better place.
Number two from the series Beyond the Lines on June 11, 2018, hosted by Rusty Kamori. It's called Miss Hawaii USA 2015 with guest Emma Wo. It's on our Beyond the Lines playlist. In this show, we focused on Emma Wo's qualities and character, why she believes she won Miss Hawaii Teen USA in 2018 and Miss Hawaii USA in 2015, sharing her experiences in a variety of businesses and the keys to her success as an entrepreneur. Viewers will gain valuable insights into Emma's success and constant striving for excellence and the importance of goal setting and being proactive in achieving those goals. You won the Miss Hawaii Teen USA in 2008. Yes. Why did you enter that pageant? Uh, my mom and I have conflicting stories on why I entered the pageant. I mean, it was so long ago now, I almost can't remember. It was like 11 years ago. So um, I, I think I just wanted something new, and I wanted something different, and I wanted to flex my muscle a little bit in the pageant space. And I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, really, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know any of the girls competing. I didn't even know all the phases of competition, but it was a kind of fun thing for my mom and I to prep together on. Um, and then the personal transformation that I went through, um, preparing for Miss Hawaii USA and then preparing for Miss Teen USA was like addicting. I mean, it was so cool to be so empowered. Um, especially as a young woman who was just finding her way in this world to um, develop those confidence skills and um, interview skills and things like that. It was addicting. And I think it's why I decided later on um, to run in the Miss Hawaii USA pageant as well. So what, what kind of insecurities did you have and what did you end up learning about yourself through that teen pageant? Yeah, I learned so much. Um, not only those public speaking skills. I mean, now I can walk into a room and I'm not scared to do public speaking and I'm not scared to do a job interview or something like that one that I was previously so terrified of. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I was pretty shy and pretty introverted, I would say. So those skills are definitely something that I learned through competing in that Miss Hawaii Teen USA pageant. And then also, you know, the friendships that I gained through the pageant. It sounds so cliche. You know, people are like, I don't, I'm not doing pageants to make friends, but you are though, and you make you you meet so many people that are like minded and have similar values to you. And those are just invaluable to me still today. You okay, so you had a goal of wanting to be Miss Hawaii USA. Right. What what tell me some insight into your pursuit of this goal. Yeah, so I wanted to be Miss Hawaii USA because I think that that feeling of personal transformation that I experienced when I was trying to be Miss Hawaii Teen USA, again, it was so addicting and I wanted that feeling again. And um, not only that, but I wanted to meet new people. Number three, from the series Research in Manoa on June 11, 2018, hosted by Jay Fidel. It's called The Continuing Eruption of Kilauea with guest Andrea Gabrielli of the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology. It's on the Research in Manoa playlist. The current series of eruptions and remarkable seismic events at Kilauea on the Big Island and the destruction of hundreds of homes in Leilani Estates and in Puna generally has been catastrophic for the people in that area and will have huge financial implications for them, for Hawaii Island, and for the state. Our hearts go out to the people who have lost their homes and whose lives have been upended. There are many things we need to learn on how to develop resilience to seismic incidents of this nature and scope. And of course, there are many things that the geologists and volcanologists are learning that will be useful in predicting and dealing with eruptions like this going forward. You might not even recognize it, but that's Halema'oma'o. So the bottom dropped out. The, the main, the, the crater uh, on the summit caldera has dramatically changed, dramatically changed. And so uh, you can see in the, in the pictures, basically, uh, the, okay, here, yeah, the, the former lava lake has dropped. You can see the former bottom, but it's really, uh, everything has changed dramatically, and the entire uh, northwestern rim of Halemaomao is sliding inward the crater. And that's what all the, the fractures and folds of, and the, the scars, basically, that you can see 
on the right hand side of this, uh, of this picture. So it's really impressive. And we're talking about millions of tons of lava here. T tons There's a lot of, of material. A lot of material, but it's very interesting to, to, to give numbers to this uh, uh, phenomenon that we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, the subsidence at the summit was basically 1.5 meters. So meaning that the whole volcano, the, the summit basically went down 1.5 meters uh, as a result of this subsidence, as a result of magma moving from the summit reservoirs uh, into the East Rift Zone and, and fueling the eruption in Puna. So as it so, drops down from the um, Hali Mau Mau, um, then it sort of, it finds a way, or well, that first chart, the top left, uh, it finds a way elsewhere and comes out and forms a river that goes down to the ocean. Absolutely. That's the, that's the lava that dropped out of Hale Mau Mau. Hale Mau Mau, and it's going in, in, underground, basically, into the plumbing system of the volcano. It emerges in Puna at the fissure 8, and then it continues down the, the rift zone. But let's talk about a little bit more about this uh, dramatic changes at Hale Mau Mau, as I believe we have another picture uh, okay. that we can see, maybe. Um, so, okay, this one, uh, so this is a, a mosaic that was put together by, again, uh, Scott Rowland uh, at the Department of Geology and Geophysics at UH Manoa. And on the left, uh, there is a satellite pictures of Hale Mau Mau in 2000. Number four from the series, Taking Your Health Back, on June 5th, 2018, hosted by Wendy Lowe, it's called Powering Over Diabetes, with guests LJ Duenas and Doug Park. It's on the Taking Your Health Back playlist. In this episode of Taking Your Health Back, Wendy and her guests talk about diabetes, who is at risk, prevention, and what type of help is out there for those living with diabetes. The bottom line is that you need to know your risks, and you also need to know that, yes, you can live well with diabetes. A lot of uh, diabetics forget sometimes that uh, they need to take their medication. They're so busy with their lifestyles that they get wrapped up in doing so many different things. But having said all of that, um, the major things that affected me were physical also. Um, I had some major operations. Um, of a lifestyle that I think um, belied the fact of what I should be doing, I didn't do. And it affected me that way physically. Uh, I had some major operations, as I said, and that changed me also. Um, when I woke up one day after that major operation, I, I made a promise to myself that I needed to make some changes. And that was to um, not only my lifestyle, but to do as much as I can to help others with diabetes. Well, you've got a lot of history, um, 40 years in the making. Mm -hmm. So when you were diagnosed with diabetes till now, what are the major changes you feel as far as managing your diabetes? Well, number one is uh, uh, education again. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to not only my beginning to educate myself, and that's what started me on the right track, but educating others, of course. Uh, the educational benefits I, I learned along the way is the outreach programs and being able to speak to doctors who uh, with a lot more knowledge than I did at the time. And based on that, I started to learn a lot more of my condition, what needed to be done. Um, and the fact that, you know, diabetes is a recent illness, really, when you look at it, it was di uh, discovered in 1969 only. So that tells you that it's a recent uh, illness when you compare it to the rest of the world as far as history, you know. Um, but all of that comes back down to, again, the word education. Right. It's educating yourself and getting how to improve your lifestyle and doing so much more for yourself. Number five, from the series What's on Your Mind, Hawaii, on June 5th, 2018, hosted by Tim Apicella. It's called Kona Vog Ignored and More. It's on our What's on Your Mind playlist. Kona's air quality is being adversely impacted by the Vog produced by Kilauea's eruptions. 
Kona residents feel that government agencies and news media are not reporting the dangerously poor air quality in order to avoid a negative impact on tourism. What's on Your Mind also covered reactions to the recent NFL rule requiring players to stand for the national anthem or pay steep fines, and covers opinions both for and against the new rule. So you live in Kona, and uh, you've noticed in the last week or so, week and a half, um, you've had some pretty bad cases of uh, air quality issues. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it started, of course, when the eruption began over a month ago, Tim, and it's been getting progressively worse. And on Tuesday, we blew a 154, which is in the dark orange, unhealthy for everybody range. And then yesterday, we were back up to 153. And it's ranged, you know, from the 80s to the high 120s uh, in the week since, you know, between those dates. And right now, we're a little bit better, but I'm looking out my window at the ocean and I cannot see the horizon. And normally I see a real crisp demarcation line between the sea and sky. So it's bad. Um, but the, the weird thing is that we're not being told how bad it is by anybody in the, in the uh, TV broadcast media. And also, I think during these, these bad days, and I've confirmed this with uh, both Civil Defense and the Department of Health, uh, the Air Quality Division, is that there's really no um, official broadcast or, or, or alert about um, a high rating of um, bad air quality. That's true, Tim, and it's coming to us over here, because imagine, like looking at the map you showed, imagine if the tables were turned. Imagine if that 160 was in Honolulu, and that nice green four was over Kona. Do you think that Honolulu News Now, oops, I mean Hawaii News Now, would actually broadcast it and talk about it? Okay. I mean, they have plenty of time to talk about Bruno Mars and Honolulu traffic, but this is a very serious issue that is not being covered. So do you think that's just how the news cycle works here in the state? Because Honolulu has, you know, close to a million people and Big Island doesn't? Or do you think there's some other ulterior motive uh, as to why the reporting is not occurring? Well, there could be a bit of Big Island fatigue going on right now because, you know, we have to give credit where credit is due. They have all been doing an incredible job covering the lava eruption, and they've been doing it with great compassion and with amazing detail. And in some cases, they've been risking their own safety. Staff pick. We also have a staff pick. This time it's from the series Hispanic Hawaii on June 12, 2018, hosted by Richard Concepcion. It's called Spanish Teachers Teaching Spanish in Hawaii with guest Maida Hickling. The show is in Spanish and English. It's on our Hispanic Hawaii playlist. Teachers are very special and they play an important role in our lives. All the way from kindergarten to graduate school, they help us understand the world around us and how to become good citizens in our country. The future of any nation is in the hands of its teachers. Teachers can help in the development of leaders and great leaders build great nations. Education plays various roles in different stages of life. Learning different languages can give us a competitive edge in today's marketplace, and Spanish is the second most highly spoken language in the world. The guest for this episode was Maida Hickling. She is a Spanish teacher at Waipahu High School. She talked about the importance of learning Spanish and the benefit of her school's Spanish program. So you receive an award as well, uh -huh. uh, monetary, so they can help Es, es como una ayuda, un incentivo que lo puedes okay. utilizar para tus clases, para tu clases o personal, okay. no, no hay una restricción en eso. Y la condición de este premio es que en marzo del próximo año uh -huh. tengo que ir a Texas a competir contra maestros de la región suroeste a la que pertenece Hawái, que son Nevada, California, uh, Utah, Washington State, son cinco estados. Cinco estados que van a competir Petito, para su maestro, las... Cada asociación mandó su maestro del año, entonces oh, yo voy a representar entonces a Hawaii. Entonces te va a representar a Hawaii. Yeah. Wow, qué bien. Sí. Bueno, vamos a hacerte otra pregunta aquí. Sí. I got this question and I want to know about the, the Hawaii Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Have a, a requirement that every student who graduate from high school had to have some kind of classes learning a second language. Why is that requirement? 
uh, because some of the colleges, some, especially in the mainland, require that you need to have a two-year uh, program in a world language. Okay. But um, because we try to help the students to have more options now, in the past was mandatory for world language, but now they give an option that could be arts. That is good, and it's important Wait, that they is, can have yes. arts. I, I like that idea, but that kind of divide the, the pie now. <laughs> so we have to fight with arts so for, for that requirement. But this um, new superintendent, she has been very uh, good promoting languages. Actually, she's from Puerto Rico. I don't know if you knew that. And no, she speaks Spanish. She's fluent in Spanish. And uh, she has been helping, uh, helping to develop a better vision for the world language program and hopefully it stays the same. And there has been a big push for the seal of biliteracy. That is one of the, uh, the benefits for being part of an honor society. You can always find the links to these shows in our daily email advisories. If you don't already get our daily email advisories, you can sign up to get them on thinktechhawaii.com. These are only samplings from the top five and the staff pick from across our 35 weekly talk shows. There are, of course, many more. To see these shows in their entirety, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. Great diversity, great community, great content at ThinkTech. If you have any questions or comments about these or any of our shows, please let us know. And yes, it's okay to share them with your friends and colleagues. Thanks so much for watching our shows and for supporting our efforts at ThinkTech. And now, let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, Contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. And we're always looking for new shows. We've recently added Outside the Lines, hosted by Rusty Kamori, which covers leadership issues and advice in Hawaii. It plays weekly at 10 a.m. on Mondays. You can find the episodes on our Outside the Lines playlist. Indeed, it was one of our top five talk shows this week. And we've added Taking Your Health Back, hosted by Wendy Lowe, which covers personal health issues and information to help you improve your health and your quality of life. It plays bi-weekly at 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. You can find the episodes on our Taking Your Health Back playlist. It was also one of the top five shows this week. 
And we've likewise added a new show called The Will of the People, hosted by Martha Randolph, which covers politics and public and political opinion in Hawaii. It plays bi-weekly at 1 p.m. on Thursdays. You can find the episodes on our Will of the People playlist. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Marby Kelly. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>